Chair now recognizes the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Green. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for appearing, Mr. Cardre, and uh, I would remind persons that you are the first and only agency with a single mission of protecting consumers. You're it. There's nothing like you in the United States. When I say you, I mean the agency itself. I think both sides of the aisle could agree that there's nothing like us in the United States, and, perhaps. And yeah. some, of us, some of us would be grateful that you exist. Uh, there may be others who would differ. But you're the only agency with this purpose. And you've succeeded. The, the empirical evidence indicates that you've succeeded. Billions of dollars returned to consumers by one estimate, 12 billion or more. Millions of complaints having been filed, but you've had over a million complaints that you've processed one way or another. And as I listen to my colleagues, one might think that you are the culprit, that you are the, the entity that ought to be uh, persecuted and possibly prosecuted. Let's talk about Wells Fargo, for example. Uh, it was Wells Fargo that opened up approximately two million, depending on who's counting and how you count, two million accounts without authorization, not the, not the Consumer Protection True, Bureau. I, I didn't do that. You didn't do that. It was Wells Fargo. It was Wells Fargo that has been fined and penalized about $185 million, uh, not the CFPB. But listening to my colleagues, one would think that it was the Consumer Protection Bureau, the agency that is there to protect consumers, that's the culprit. It's Wells Fargo, quite frankly, that ought to have somebody prosecuted. Uh, to date, has anybody been prosecuted for what happened over at Wells, uh, Mr. Cordray? Uh, I'm not aware of any charges, although I, I believe that a number of uh, different agencies and, and prosecutors at different levels of the government have said that they have opened investigations, so I don't know where those stand. Well, I, I think that investigations ought to be opened, and I think somebody ought to be prosecuted. We can't have a circumstance where you open up millions of accounts without authorization, and the guy at the top gets a golden parachute and he's out. People at the bottom, the entry-level employees, may end up holding the bag. They may be prosecuted. Uh, my hope is that some of these people in upper management will be prosecuted. The evidence is there at least for a prosecution. That may not be a conviction, but there's probable cause. And I'm going to write the Justice Department. I'm going to ask the Justice Department to investigate for the purposes of uh, prosecuting persons who've committed crimes at Wells. Uh, Wells Fargo is a good company otherwise. I'm not a guy who thinks that Wells Fargo ought to go out of business because they've made some mistakes. Just as I think my colleagues ought not want to put the CFPB out of business because of a few mistakes that may have been made there. The judiciary makes mistakes. If, if you'd listen to some of my constituents and their complaints about the judiciary, uh, you think that the whole judiciary is a fiasco of some sort. But nobody wants to put the judiciary out of business. We want to see a judiciary continue to function. We want it to function efficaciously, but we want to see it continue to function. So I can't understand, to be quite honest with you, why people would want to eliminate the first and only agency with the mission of protecting consumers. That's your sole mission, protecting consumers. And Mr. Cordray, I want to compliment you for standing your ground, standing your ground against the odds. What kind of odds? $2.3 million per day being spent against the CFPB. $2.3 million per day, and you still stand. 60-plus hearings where you've had to come and testify, and you still stand. Sitting. People trying to sue you to get you out of office and you still stand. I compliment you for standing for consumers, Mr. Cordray, and I want to give you just a few seconds, if you would, to say a few things about why you're standing. Stubbornness, I guess, but um, uh, look, it, we saw what things were like in the, in the lead up to the financial crisis. 
And by the way, when we're talking about community banks and credit unions, nothing kills them off faster than a financial crisis that blows up the economy and a bunch of them go out of business. And that happened in 2008, 9, and 10. Uh, and it happens every time we have a crisis going all the way back to the Depression. So, time of the gentleman has expired. The chair now recognizes the gentleman.